these are the vinyl or the pleather these are pleather they actually smell mm, like vinyl <laughs> whoa holy crap what the fuck was that in the road see these fucking seats dude i would have crashed if i didn't have these goddamn seats just then holy shit What's going on everybody got an awesome review for you today or at least one that i wish somebody else would have done before because i've been interested in these seats uh for a long time they're the sparko chronos um and i just installed a set in my car no shit or i wouldn't be doing a review on it would i well unless i was a fucking nimrod um and i just want to go over some of the pros and cons of these seats and uh yeah let's motherfucking do it so obviously these things are head and shoulders above the stock mustang seats those things are super comfortable the stock seats the stock leather seats um but probably the worst performance seats of all time just absolutely no support whatsoever comfortable that's about it um and they weighed about i don't know fucking felt like 100 pounds each um i know it's not that much but they're heavy actually maybe they are that much the fucking back is sore from pulling those things in and out um these seats the sparko chronos aren't very light but um they're lighter than the stock seats that's for damn sure um these are the vinyl or the pleather these are pleather. They actually smell mm, like vinyl. <laughs> Whoa! Holy crap, what the fuck was that in the road? See? These fucking seats, dude. I would have crashed if I didn't have these goddamn seats just then. Holy shit. Um, yeah, so these seats actually look, um, they look I don't say they look stock, but they look similar as far as they're black. Um, they look like leather, and they have the white stitching like uh, like the stock seats. So they don't look completely out of place. Obviously, with the big spark up top and the holes, you know, they look kind of racy. Um, I don't really give a shit about that, but, you know, they're pretty cool looking. So let's go over some of the cons real quick. Um, I don't give a shit about any of this, but it is something to consider because um, you, you see people that install a McLeod, you know, twin disc clutch and all this, and he fucking makes a little bit of noise, you know. It's like, no shit. I even made a video like that. Um, but uh, <laughs> you can't get her, you can't move around and grab stuff as easy as you can in the stock seats. Um, for example, one of the biggest things, again, I'm six foot, 240 pounds, and um, I'm a little bit up on the wheel, but I'm driving it like I'm a fucking NASCAR, you know, Le Mans 24-hour driver. Um, you can't get stuff in the center console very easily. Like, you, it, it, because of all this, you have to kind of, <clears throat> gotta do the claw, and you gotta come down and back like this. So, it's a little bit of a bitch, you know, adjusting that, but totally worth the sacrifice in my opinion, but, what the fucking Jesus Christ, dude. Holy shit, these fucking Atlanta drivers are fucking unreal. They're so bad. Get them, officer. Get them. Uh, another thing, they are reclinable. Um, and they have a, you know, like a little lever on the side. It's, I can do it, but it's damn near impossible to get to. Like, you have to do this with your hand and try to lift it up and and they're fucking stout too now the handles are cheap plastic and i actually broke one when i was uh, mounting the hardware and stuff on it oh, i'm gonna be careful going by this cop tracking it 
attention. Um, but you kind of want to have the seat adjusted. Uh, you have to have the door open to really get it where you want it. Um, another thing, you can with the with the sliders, you can slide it up, you know, forward and back. Um, but if you slide it too far back, the handle will actually dig into uh, the floorboard. So if you go too far back, you, you don't have access to the handle anymore. It's like you can't get your fingers underneath it to lift it up. Um, but after, you know, you fuck yourself over by doing that a couple times, and then you have to get back out of the car or whatever, um, you figure out. I actually don't have to get back out of the car because I have, you know, I'm not a total bitch. And, but you got to dig your fingernails up underneath it. It's kind of, kind of a pain. Um, you learn to, you know, don't slide the seat all the way back, you know. Um, and the reason why you would slide it forward and back is because getting out of this car now with these seats, um, you don't just slide out. Um, you don't just plop out. Um, these side bolsters, it's, uh, it's a lot easier to get out if you, if you slide the seats back at least a little bit. Um, you make a little bit of room, so, um, but it's good for you, you know? It's good for all us fatties, you know? Not to do a little extra work getting in and out of our cars. So, these things are really comfortable, but, um, like I said, I'm six foot, 240 pounds. My back, it, the, 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 the back seat, um, or the back part, whatever the fuck this, the chair, fucking top part of the fucking chair it's called, um, that fits perfect. Uh, no, no issues with that at all. The seats, however, the side bolsters, yeah, they were digging up in some shit. They were digging up in my ass cheeks, kind of on the side of my quad. Uh, and I'm like, fuck, man. I must have like childbearing hips or some kind of weird shit going on because what the fuck, you know what I mean? Like, it fits my back perfect. It's all them fucking squats I'm doing. <laughs> but, uh, I was like, all right, I gotta figure this out because I can't. I do need to lose some weight because I am kind of a fat ass right now, but that takes a minute. So I uh, I solved this problem. The bolsters, these seats are heavy duty. Um, everything's, you know, obviously is, is metal. So what I did was I bought a 600 pound clamp, metal big ass clamp, and I took the, you know, each, it's, it's two separate pieces that are on that slider, took them off and spun them around and I made it a spreader. And I just re, like uh, padded the, the side bolsters with some towels and stuff and, and spread it apart and got it where I want it. Now it's perfect. It doesn't go up my keister anymore. It's really nice. And I think these seats are gonna get even better as, uh, as they wear in. Um, another thing, there's no center hole. These aren't, it's, these are, you know, street, performance seats, whatever. You can't do a five-point harness because there's no hole in the center here. Um, you probably don't want to do five-point harness anyway if you don't have a Hans device and a fucking helmet because you'll probably definitely break your neck if you hit something with a five-point harness. Um, I know because I have a broken neck and I have a steel cage in my vertebrae and you don't really want that. Um, what else? The weight, they're... Uh, these things are pretty fucking heavy. These are not like super lightweight seats, but goddamn, they're lighter than the stock seats. The stock seats are fucking heavy. I mean, the stock seats are heavy as a song bitch. Um, they got all the electronics and, you know, if you have a premium one, like I have the heater and all that, you know, the little, you know, ball massager and shit. Um, so, I don't have the heat. I don't have the heaters hooked up in it and none of that bullshit. So um, I don't really care about that. Plus it gives you monkey butt, the seat heaters. And it's like when your ass gets all slimy, like you just can never get it quite right. You know what I mean? It's either like hot or fucking hot, you know? Um, so anyway, uh, you do have to keep in mind that they're, oh, green light, green light, baby. These people are laughing. Yeah, there we go, sun. Sunshine. Wow, it's bright. Yeah, like I said, these seats are, uh, 
they're not super light but they're definitely lighter than the stock seats i know everyone probably wants to know the exact weight difference you could probably look it up um i just didn't want the cloth ones i wanted the ones that at least look like they kind of went with the car um, and i just thought these looked cool um i like looking cool <laughs> tool yeah so you only need like four things for the install uh when you're buying the seats you need the seats oh wow we got a special jesus christ what the fuck is it today this guy's not as oh my god i'm gonna have to get around you retard So when you're buying the seats, uh, keep one thing in mind, the hardware. Um, I didn't buy the hardware, I just didn't even think about it. I figured you spend 1500 bucks for seats, and I figured it came with hardware, but it doesn't. But you can buy it off the Sparco website. Um, I just missed that whole fucking, I missed that part. So I just went and bought some, bought some uh, grade eight shit. Um, so you, only, you need four things if you're doing the setup. You need the seats, you need the base plates, and you gotta get left and right, it's gotta be for the right fucking car. Um, you need the sliders, and you need the hardware, and that's it. Now, if you wanna, if you want your airbag to work, you need to hook up a little um, resistor on that plug, but uh, that's it. That's it, and that's that. Yeah, also another thing uh, with these seats, the uh, the ride height position is about the same as the leather seats. Like, I don't feel a big difference. Um, obviously I can't, you know, the seat doesn't do all that wonky shit, you know, it's not electric. Um, but as far as my view, where I'm at, where my head's at, they're about the same height as um, the, the stock leather seats. A lot of times you hear people complaining about how the you know the new new aftermarket seats are in a fucking goofy position i think a lot of that yeah they maybe they are but a lot of it's probably just not used to it um if it's in a little bit different position you get used to it just about anything um just about god damn it looks like it's gonna rain again over here motherfuckers always fucking with me and uh like damn this guy really is well, but it's, we're always in traffic and shit well yesterday it's like eight o'clock 7 30 ish still light out and um i'm turning left i'm at a red light i'm sitting there and i look over and it's it's old challenger boy but he's not in the turning lane i am there's and there's nobody behind me so i'm like all right whatever i guess he's going straight i'm turning left Turn left, you know, I'm going slow, not doing anything crazy. And I'm getting ready to shift in I start shifting in a second. And I look up in my rear view. This motherfucker cut across the intersection is behind me, fucking stomps it, going next to me, so he's got the hit on me. I'm like, God damn. So I fucking stomp it, go to the wood, and I'm not gonna lie, I fucking dusted his ass. Um when I hit third, I probably put, you know, four or five cars on them. Then I slowed down because we're probably going too fast at that point. And uh, <laughs> I slowed down and he pulled up next to me. He kind of had a sheepish little look on his face. And, uh, was giving the thumbs up. You know, I kind of gave him like, you know, thumbs up. He gave me the peace sign with this little little look like, yeah, you just busted my ass. So, but it was, it was all in good fun. And um, I'm glad I could spank his ass.